Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another edition of Wow's Alive. We have a very special guest from Germany and our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the uh, chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, and we have one of our honorees with us today, Angela Maurer. She has uh, won 12 FINA World Championship medals, 10 at 25K, and two at the 10K distance. So I want to start with the first question, Angela. It seemed that all of a sudden the world is full of German professional marathon swimmers. You, Peggy, Britta, Catherine, Christoph starting a little earlier, Thomas Lur starting a bit later. What, what happened? Of course, the German was all the time successful all the years. I mean, um, Christoph Wandratsch and Peggy was the leader, the first leader in, in the open water, I mean, for the Germans. And um, I, I saw um, 1995, Peggy in the television. She won their um, um, European uh, championship. She won their the, um, gold medal on 5K. And I thought in this moment, I would try also like her. And one year later, I start with the open water swimmer, 96. And um, I think we have not a special, special, um, special program in the, in the German Federation. I think we just try and, um, and keep on. on. And the other try also, also like Thomas Lutz. Of course, he is, uh, I think he's the best swimmer uh, in the world. He was the best swimmer in the world. But I think um, we keep rather tradition, but not with special bookram. Okay. And these, um, the other Germans, were they, were they your good friends or were they just competition? No, of course, I was good friend with uh, Peggy Büchse and, and with Peter uh, 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 Kamrau, I think, and me, I think we was a uh, perfect three girls uh, in the competition. Um, of course, uh, we uh, uh, swim, but um, besides of the water, we help each other, of course. Okay. And when you look back on your career, wh what were your favorite races, your favorite moments? Oh, my favorite race is Atlantic City around the island because um, they change all the time the different uh, the conditions. First, we start uh, the first three hours in the, in the Atlantic and then change. Uh, we swim uh, back in the back bay and in the last one hour, when I remember correct, we swim in the ocean again. And this race is also uh, difficult because you have only rower as guides and you swim all the time alone. And this, this, that means the race is very interesting. It was for me. It's, it's really my favorite race. And, and it's just I, I think if I have to, I think if I have to put this a possibility to swim again this race, I would think about it. <laughs> ah. And, and was this your favorite because you enjoyed the difference or because you were really good compared to the other competitors at swimming this race? No, I enjoy really the different conditions. And it was, a, it's, um, you must be all the time uh, clear in the mind. It's not only the swimming. In this race is uh, really important the tactic and also the, the, the rower's guide. It's, we are in this race, we are really a team. It's not like in the world champion where you have uh, 10 laps on 25 and you have uh, two feeding pantoons uh, with two uh, different coaches. No, this is your team. You, you are a, a team of three people. Mm -hmm. I know it was the favorite race of, um... Marilyn Bell, she met her husband as a lifeguard in Atlantic City. So it's, she, has to, she has to say it was her favorite event. And, and for you, your most, your most difficult race, your most difficult, most disappointing. 
of course, the most disappointing race was for me uh, Beijing 2008 in the Olympic Games on 10K because I missed really, really closely the Olympic medal. And before I won all, I was world champion, I was European champion, I won the um, World Cup's overall ranking. But um, my dream was um, all the time uh, to catch the, the, the medal in, on the Olympics. I was in that moment really disappointed, but in that moment I also decided I'm not finished here with the Olympic Games. I will come again for sure. Okay, so for, <laughs> for the Beijing Olympics, um, it was really interesting for the public because there were two women in the race who were mothers, yourself and Edith, which was yeah. many of the Olympic women seemed to be about 15 years old. So we had, we had two women who were mothers. And it was a tremendous amount of publicity about that. What was your, what was your thinking in the race? And when, when you think back on this, is there something you should have done differently, you would do differently? Um, of course, I mean, um, I swim, I swim for me, I swim also for my family because they support me a lot to get my dream comes true. I mean, to qualify first to qualify for the Olympics and then maybe a fight for a medal. But, um, but before the race, Shortly before it also in race, I was all the time focused and was not thinking, now I, I'm a mother who has a, a, a young child. So I was really professional and try to do my best result. And do you think about this race every day, every week, every month, or once a year? Um, I mean, after Beijing, I think every day about that because, but this gives me also the, uh, the motivation to uh, keep swimming on for more longer years, four years longer. And I decide, um, I, I decide to prepare for London. Of course, I plan only uh, um, year by year to see if, if I'm if I'm good enough uh, to the high level to swim the competition on a, and, um, but now it's, it's not so much anymore. Sometimes I think about it, especially when, when we, when we sit in our living room and I see, you see behind this, then I think about it. <laughs> so you, you have to explain uh, to everyone what those, what those two things on the wall are. They're probably not very important. Yes, these are, these are the, um, this is from my husband. He was uh, 1988 in Seoul, won two Olympic medals. And on silver and bronze, um, four times 100 um, freestyle and four times 100 relay. And my dream and my goal was all the time up. I was <laughs> to be up from there. <laughs> What are the chances that your child is going to learn how to swim? Um, my son is also swimming, but not like a profession like me or my husband. Only one time a day. We think it's, it's important for the youngers, also for the health, to do a little bit something for themselves. But we don't push him. Does he play other sports? No, only swimming. Only okay. swimming. And before he was a soccer player, but three years ago, he started uh, with swimming. And now he's also, he's happy with, the, with that because he found there also a lot of friends. So he's happy with that. Okay. Tell us about the difference training before you were a mother and after you were a mother. Were you, were you able to do the same kinds of workouts? Did you train in a different way? You trained less meters? No, I, I, keep, I keep the training all the time because I train every week 30, 30 to 35 hours. 
because this is needed uh, when you swim in the open water, especially when you swim the long races. I mean, uh, not especially the 10, uh, the 10K, but if you swim 25K uh, or longer races, you have to prepare um, your body. You have to prepare your, your, your head. I mean, you have to work mentally. I, I work with that a lot of time with my husband especially we analyze um, the training and uh, competitions. Of course, sometimes I made also a mistake in the competition and you can do all the time better. And what I changed a little bit is um, I was more concentrate uh, what I eat. Because when I was younger, I never was concentrate. I eat everything what I want to eat. But now I look a little, I look more, I'm more focused on, on, the, on the food now. This was changing, but the training not really changing. All the time, train, 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 day by day, week by week, year by year. Do you remember when you found out that open water was going to be in Beijing? Do you remember that moment? Yes, I remember that woman because it was, it, I think it was in the, in the summertime in 2005. In that moment, I had my son, Maxim. He was born in May 2005. And I decided, okay, I will try to come back. Because my, my dream was when I was a young girl, I want to partic participate in the Olympic Games, and that was my only chance. So how I did, started. How, how, how did you find out? Who told you? Where did you hear it? Where did you see it? I heard it from my from my sister from Switzerland. She's living in uh, in Switzerland, and she told me that. And and I think in October this was uh, public. I think it was not earlier public. I remember in October because I speak at that time with our newspaper here in Wiesbaden. Big smile when you found very, out? I was very happy, but I was also nervous because I know what it means when you start again at a professional swimmer. And I, I have, I have a, a, a little baby. In, in the beginning, it was not so easy for me especially the, the first months uh, after the born uh, to, to keep the training and to start easy and easily the training and especially also the, uh, the competition because I have a break from exactly two years. So I don't know what will happen. <laughs> so you, um, you're swimming well, you qualify, <laughs> for, you qualify for the London Olympics. You're um, older than most Olympians. And then you appear in Playboy magazine. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, in 2012, uh, before London, I was there, uh, um, I was there 37. And I was, uh, uh, I was very happy when the Playboy uh, called me and asked me, do you want to do this? But I, I can also say this is in German tradition that every four years they will have some athletes, maybe four or five athletes, and make picture before the Olympics. Of course, you are then more in the public in this moment. But I, I would do the same and I enjoy very much to do the, to do the nice picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so because, we, we... Because, because I think it's, it's, it's an honor to be in the Playboy. For, for a woman. I think, I think you, you, have, you have been a role model for women to continue to compete later. Um, you've been very successful. You have uh, motherhood. So you, this has is, this is, um, opened up a world for, for many. Tell us about the London Games. How was your head compared to Beijing? You are now experienced. You've been to the Olympics before. You're you know, world champion still. What were you thinking going into London? What was your preparation? What was your head like? Um, I mean, in I, I we don't change uh, the preparation for for London 
so much. Okay, in Beijing, it was, the water was very hot. I remember it was 30 degrees, something like that. And um, we know before London, the water can be more colder. And if and honestly, I don't like really the cold water. Yeah, you don't know if have the water 16, 17, or 19 degrees or something like that. Of course, on this time we don't use the wetsuit like we do it now. Um, but the training was not different. The only thing was I tried to have more fat on my body, that I not feel so cold in the water. But not so much because if you have more, more fat, you you need more power uh, to move your body in the in the water. And for me, it was the race the race amazing? I think. This was one of the best race what I ever swam. And of course, the Hyde Park was amazing. It was amazing, uh, amazing with everybody. It was an amazing location. I think this location was much better than in Beijing. Uh, so I enjoy very much and I give everything what I had. I give everything what I can swim. So I was, I was very happy with that result, with place. More was, the other was better than me. I could not swim fast. <laughs> if the Olympics was 25K, would it have been better for you? Yes, I think yes. But then, you know, then everybody will concentrate on the 25 <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, 10, 10 FINA world championship medals at 25 K. That's I, uh, of course, 25 is totally different than a 10 K. But I, maybe for the open water would be 25 um, more um, interesting because it's more strategy. It's more tactic. It's more, you need more power. You need more mental strength. I mean, 10 K or two hour swim that can a lot of swimmers, especially when the swimmers comes fresh from the pool. But not everybody can swim five or five hours 30. This is maybe different. So when Atlantic City has the Olympics in 25 years, will you come back? Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that would be the second comeback in my life. You, you won a uh, FINA event at age 38. A World Cup event. What was the reaction? What was your feeling? It, did it surprise you? Or it was just a normal part, a normal result from your training? No, this is, this was not uh, normal. This was not planned. Because this race was 15k in, when I remember correctly, it was in Mexico and Cancun. And this was a really hard race because we have uh, heavy conditions. It was super wavy. And I remember that the man catch, catch us and we swim together with the men, especially Anna and me. And I was surprised because I just won the race because I have had a better touching in the finish. I remember the picture. My head was down. And here it was up, this was a different. But we, I think both, we did a great race. It was nice to swim with Anna, and it was also nice to, to, um, to compete with her, especially in the end. No, it was it, not the end. It, it was a huge, uh, huge surprise for me. It wasn't just the finish. There was 14,998 other meters there too. So you were, <laughs> you, you were in a position to win. Um, yes, of course, of course, of course, in that moment, um, my experience helped me all the time and I, I try to be concentrated, especially in the finish. So, uh, because the races are won not before, the, the races are won when you touch the finish uh, board. What will we see from Angela in the next two years? What will you be doing? I think, uh, I don't know exactly. Um, because this year, I suppose we will not have any competition because of the Corona crisis. And 
I think in the end of the year, I will think about what competition uh, uh, will I swim next year or what competition I will not swim next year. I will see. But what I can say, of course, I want something um, give back from me and my experience to our um, nice swimming community. Maybe as a functioner, I don't know. You will see. I will let me surprised. But maybe I swim <laughs> how I want it. But I can, uh, can say uh, swimming is my passion. Um, I love it all the time. And I, I think the thing is work hard, have fun, and be calm. This is my secret. <laughs> Stefan Lacar, we interviewed him a couple of weeks ago. And he said when he was done racing, racing, he went to swim the English Channel. He said, he wasn't in very good shape. And the only reason he swam the English Channel is for 10 years, people had been saying to him, oh, you're a marathon swimmer. Have you swum the English Channel? Yes, 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 yes. I and know. he said, no, but I was a world champion. And they went, oh, well, you know, oh you're <laughs> <laughs> Do you think about these kinds of swims? No, because um, it's, I think the English Journal is very hard and very difficult to swim because uh, it depends on the competition and you are depends on the competition, on the conditions, yes? Mm -hmm. It's not like I, I prepare and I swim so fast as I can, that's much more. It's the current, I mean, it's the totally strong current and if you do any mistakes, you can stop between uh, between the journal yes but for me the thing that was n never interesting for me because i hate the cold water there are warm channels no 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 what means warm if i can use the wetsuit maybe i remember is i mean it's much colder than the the uh, traversier lac saint john i did it uh, two times and this was really hard for me i remember this was 17 until 19 this was okay but I'm not a special cold swimmer. It doesn't matter how much fat I'm on have on the body. I was, in, <laughs> I, was in, I was in Cabo in February. It was 23. It was warm. Yeah, okay. Greece is 28. Very warm. <laughs> I like more to, I like much more to swim in warmer water. Okay. So we okay, have to we have I mean, now we have not any more problems in cold water because we can use, use the wetsuit. So the change, everything. That's, that's, that's for the races. Yes. For the other swims, uh, the wetsuits aren't counting as much. <laughs> Who were the toughest women you competed with? Who were your big competitors? You, you're standing ready to start a 25K world championship and you look to your right, you look to your left and you think, mm, who were the ones you worried about the most in the big races? I mean, before the, okay, you see each other. I mean, you cannot say exactly uh, who is the, strong, is the strongest swimmer, especially in the 25, because in the 25 can happen so much. Yes, it's really a tough race, a tough distance. And it's a lot of tactic also. But what can I say? Um, for me, the, 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 um, the best competitors is, of course, Anna Marcella Kuna. We swim a lot of time each against other. And also uh, Martina Grimaldi uh, from uh, Italy. I think that was, the, for me, the, the most strong, strong, strongest women in the race on 25K. Mm. All three, of you, all three of you are in the Hall of Fame now. <laughs> I think however, so. however, you got there first. <laughs> you touched first. <laughs> Martina second, Anna third. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I would say that about, yes. Angela, I want to thank you very much for your time today. We look forward to uh, your decision at the end of the year, and we look forward to you winning medals at age 40, 41, 42, 43, <laughs> 44, 45, and keep going. Thank you very much, too. Okay.
Bye bye, Nick.